what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out how adam will book kofi mania part two the second half of this video part one was the setup definitely was enjoying where adam was uh trying to you know set up kofi mania how he would have did things so i'm interested to see how he would have finished it off man but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel roll to 70k and let's finish off uh part two here instead let's do the interesting story that for some reason wwe never really attempted to do except super briefly two years later via the turd smeared filter of retribution mm. which was bad and that's kofi versus mustafa ali kofi's out there with the new day there's pancakes in the shape of the wwe championship there are tearful words from Big E and xavier woods about how this is the proudest moment of their lives it's an honor to stand here and watch someone who deserves this so much mm -hmm. achieving their dream. And when Kofi finally gets a chance to, to hold the mic, to say a few words, Ali's music hits. Mustafa mm -hmm. Ali comes down and says, look, first of all, I just want to say, congratulations, you deserve it. Gets a you deserve it chant going. But here's the thing, I deserved it too. Woods and Biggie are like, dude, like, we get it, but read the room, this isn't your moment. And Ali responds, well, <laughs> it should have been. It should have been. Kofi, I'm talking to you, not your boys. You talked about waiting for this, waiting too long. Well, I'm not gonna make that mistake, Kofi. I'm not waiting. I was kicked in the head and through no fault of my own, I was taken out of the chamber. I wanted to keep going. I wrestled with my concussion because this was my dream too. I That's good. would have won the elimination chamber and then I would have gone on to beat you at WrestleMania. I should be WWE champion right now. So I'm coming out here with the chance for you like to do this. the right thing. That's Turns to good. the crowd, asks, why are you booing me? I'm right, and he is, kind of. Yeah. But he's just being a dick about it, which is the perfect heel reasoning. A quirk of fate took something from Mustafa Ali mm -hmm. and gave it to Kofi, and if Kofi doesn't realize it, that if Kofi doesn't realize that he's lucky, Kofi should do the gracious thing and let Ali have next, and Kofi, he realizes Mustafa Ali's being a bit of a dick about this, but he accepts. The match is made for Money in the Bank. In the build to Money in the Bank, Xavier Woods and Big E win the right to compete against the Usos for the SmackDown Tag Championships, and Ali slowly turns to the dark side before finally snapping. On an episode of SmackDown before the show, the Usos blindside the New Day, take them out, mm -hmm. Kofi runs down to help out where he's attacked by Mustafa Ali. Ali takes Kofi, puts his head between the stairs and the Ooh. ring post and kicks it as hard as he can. He's trying to give Kofi a concussion, the injury that robbed him of his WWE mm, championship I like that, man. opportunity. That, that creates, a, that's creating a new star in Mustafa Ali. You know, he he's getting over in the sense of heel heat. People are legitimately going to give him good heel heat for attacking Kofi. It's making a new star out of him. It's making the babyface role seem more, you know, more like important now. I like this, I like this. It's Kofi is clear to compete, just, but he's banged up. So at Money in the Bank, we've got the following matches. Daniel mm -hmm. Bryan defeats like Eric Rowan by capitalizing on the injured arm. Big E and Xavier Woods defeat the Usos to win the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. And Kofi successfully defends in a 15 minute, hopefully barnstormer, because both guys are good, match yeah. against Ali, a top level worker. Kofi fights out from underneath an injured head to beat him, super strong, super clean. New day at the end of the night, hold all the gold. The next like pay-per-view is Stomping Grounds, because I really truly don't give a shit about Super Showdown or booking around it. In order mm -hmm. to keep the Kofi Kingston having top quality pay-per-view matches as champion train going, let's just reinsert Daniel Bryan into mm -hmm. Kofi's life, shall we? New Day are in the ring after Money in the Bank when Daniel Bryan comes out to confront them. Don't think that I forgot what you stole from me. I had a bit of business to take care of last month, but now mm -hmm. I am putting you 
on notice. The fairy tale is coming to an end. I know why you won, Kofi. I know why you won. Power of friendship, right? Positivity. Because mm. of course, it was never going to be a fair fight, was it, with your cheerleaders in your corner, mm. watching your back. It's unfair. It's unworthy of a WWE I champion. See Daniel Bryan. So I decided that Daniel Bryan couldn't that type of promo. To make some new friends of my own. And that is when Woods and Big E are attacked from behind by the men now known as FTR, the Revival. That Daniel Bryan cool. beats down Kofi Kingston. Daniel Bryan and the Revival form a super group, a super worker super group, yeah. and stand tall. This leads to a winner take all six man tag team match at Stomping Grounds. Daniel Bryan and the Revival wow. versus the New Day for both the WWE Championship. That is interesting and different. It gets them over his heels, gets Daniel Bryan over as a heel. They all three are fantastic wrestlers, fantastic workers. Winner takes all match? That sounds cool as hell. How the hell this, how, how the hell Adam could come up with some shit like this? But they can't do it on the main roster and they get paid for it. That sounds cool. I ain't gonna lie to you. And the like SmackDown that. tag titles. I just want to see that. Don't you want to see that? I want to see that. that I mean, cool. did you watch Stomping Grounds? That was main evented by Seth Rollins versus Baron Corbin. Just a thought. How about this? with three belts on the line, main events instead. It's just a thought. At the pay-per-view, <laughs> Kofi pins Dash Wilder and the New Day retain all of their belts as the brotherhood of best friends. Obviously, Daniel Bryan wasn't pinned, pinned in that yeah, match, that's... so he's still got a massive cob on about the whole thing. No, no, which mm -hmm. sends us to extreme rules. And instead of one match, between New Day and the super group. What should we call them? I genuinely haven't written this in the script. What should we call Daniel Bryan and the Revival? Dad's on tour. At Extreme Rules, <laughs> there's two matches featuring those teams. A ladder match for the SmackDown Tag Team titles, the Revival versus New Day, and in the show's main event, not Seth and Becky versus Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans. Shock mm -hmm. horror. That can open the show, please. Can also end with Brock's cash in. You know, whatever, that, that's fine. But instead, the main event of Extreme Rules is a 30-minute Iron Man match, mm. Kofi Kingston versus Daniel Bryan, with Bryan making it his mission to expose Kofi Kingston as a fluke champion that just mm. relies on his friends. At Extreme Rules, The Revival beat The New Day to be crowned the new SmackDown okay. Tag Team Champion, setting up the vibe of, oh no, oh, The yeah. New Day's world is crumbling yeah. in the first 15 minutes of the Iron Man match, Daniel Bryan cheats to go 2-0 up on Kofi. Really book it to get the crowd behind him. There's mm -hmm. parallels here with the gauntlet match that started all of this. Kofi struggling to get to his feet, time I, running out is, on him. Kofi is good at just making these fantasy booking uh, like videos. This is this is entertaining. Like I'm visualizing this happening while he's talking about it. Be mania ending how it began. But of course, Kofi fights back to equalize before hitting one last trouble in paradise at the 10 second mark to Ooh. snag a 3-2 victory, that definitively be cool. beating the new Daniel Bryan. And then after this is where you have the Orton match. And note the use of the singular there match Kofi Kingston versus Randy Orton at SummerSlam one and done absolutely yeah. do the feud it's a great story yeah. and so far in this booking every feud for Kofi has made sense Ali's lost opportunity Daniel Bryan's quest for revenge after Mania and now we escalate it yes, with a feud I, 10 years in the making the all the stuff worked the WWE put match. into it I succeeded not because of you but despite you Randy and Randy said you weren't good enough Kofi back then and the thing that will really break your heart not just losing the title not just losing it in front of the world but the fact that after 11 years of the grind as you put it you're still not good enough Ooh. to beat me 
So SummerSlam, Kofi versus Orton. Good, it's a good story. Let's just provide mm -hmm. it with an ending. On the biggest stage, SummerSlam, when the focal point of the entire match is Randy is better than Kofi and one RKO mm -hmm. will end everything. Have Kofi managed to keep avoiding yeah. the RKO, keep slipping That's out good. of it, driving Randy Orton increasingly mad to the point where Randy gets angry so that it mirrors that famous match back in 2009. He is beside himself with rage. Have him run back for the punt, run in, trouble in paradise, f you, pin, done. <laughs> story over. Yeah. When it mattered, while people were most interested in the story, Orton puts Kofi over on the biggest stage he can. Everything tied off, nice and neat. R wrestling, it's just not that hard. It's really not, bro. <laughs> he is booking a better title reign for Kofi than they could have. That is ridiculous. 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 This title reign sounds so much more appealing, so much more memorable. You don't have to make it this hard. Is Kofi versus Orton going to main event SummerSlam over Lesnar versus Rollins? No, no, probably not. So let's put the WWE Championship back in the spotlight at Clash of Champions. And in line with that event being all about titles, champions, what it's like to hold a championship, the concept of putting the champion under the biggest amount of threat. Main event the show with a six pack challenge for the WWE Championship. That's good. Kofi defending the belt against Randy Orton, Woo. Daniel Bryan, Woo. Kevin Owens, like it. Roman Reigns, Ooh. and Alistair Black. You mm. don't want to do a match like this all the time, no. absolutely, because it can make the title picture seem a little undefined, unfocused. But once in a while, if you want to really nail down that this belt is important and this champion is important, it also gives you the chance to have an atmosphere so chaotic that if Kofi retains, which he does here, by the way, okay. then he's sure he's technically beaten everyone, but also no one really loses anything in defeat mm -hmm. because there's just so much madness going on. At the pay-per-view, Kofi wins, stands tall in ultimate victory as the head of the SmackDown roster. Love and it. that is when Brock Lesnar's music hits. Ugh. He heads up to the ring, he plants Kofi with an F5, and this sets up Kofi versus Brock Lesnar, oh, not man. on a random ass episode of SmackDown. Okay, it wasn't a random ass episode of SmackDown, I'll grant you, but also, f Fox, no special <laughs> treats for you. Instead, the two square off inside hell. And Brock spends the entire month leading up to that match Killing the New Day, <laughs> destroying Big E and Xavier Woods, delivering F5s on the outside of the ring to both men, destroying Kofi's friends, yeah. all as Paul Heyman outlines that Kofi is a fantastic physical champion, but mentally, he's weak. All it took mm. was taking out your little buds, your annoying, brittle little besties and you've completely lost your edge. And Brock Lesnar will tangle you up in your rage and he will choke you with it. Brock mm -hmm. has been through hell and on Sunday, he will be your guide. I'm the only thing is, I'm not a big fan of Hell in a Cell matches just happening before Hell in a Cell pay-per-views. I feel like they should only happen in feud-related situations. But I get it. Since it is a pay-per-view, they were probably going to have this match in Hell in a Cell. So I understand. I just hate that it is. I just hate that it's a pay-per-view. I think it should just be a stipulation that only happens when called upon. I'm sorry to say it. I really am. But Brock Lesnar at Hell in a Cell beats Kofi Kingston yeah. to become new WWE yeah. champion. But at least this way, it happens in a match rather than in a GIF. After yeah. the match, Brock takes a steel chair to Kofi's leg, the one that earlier in the match caught him with a trouble in paradise for a close two. He repeatedly smashes the chair over Kofi's leg over Damn. and over and over, putting Kofi out for months. While he's gone around TLC, time WWE conduct interviews with Kofi Kingston in his house talking about Kofi's rehab and how this has been the worst few months of Kofi Kingston's life. The WWE Championship was everything to him and, and failing 
like that, maybe, mm -hmm. just maybe, Kofi's lost the power of positivity. This takes mm -hmm. us to the Royal Rumble where Brock is doing his Brock thing. And by the way, I, I do want it on the record that the stretch of Brock Lesnar in the 2020 Rumble is legit one of my favorite Rumble memories. Uh, Brock's brilliant, gang. Sorry, sorry about that, but he is. And at number 10, out comes Kofi Kingston, making mm. his first appearance That'll on WWE good. programming nice in more than two months. He is back and he goes for Brock Lesnar. And basically, Kofi just replaces Ricochet in the real life booking of how it went. He gets Brock mm -hmm. in the balls, leading to the Claymore from McIntyre, eliminating mm -hmm. yeah. Brock Lesnar. Kofi then goes on to last in the Rumble, doing more of That'd his cool. crazy spots cool. until late in the match, maybe fifth or sixth from the end before being eliminated by Roman Reigns. Again, heat Roman up before Drew scoops all that adulation for mm -hmm. eventually eliminating Roman for the win, which leads to our final stop in this story. Elimination Chamber 2020. One year on from the birthplace of Kofi Mania, where he came up so desperately short against the new Daniel Bryan. Kofi challenges Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship. Mm. He is not afraid. He wants this more than he's wanted anything. And that will fuel him to do what no one believes that he can do. He will beat Brock Lesnar. And at Elimination Chamber, he does mm. not do that. <laughs> I was about to say, wait, is he going to really have him book him? Book him to win? That, that was good. That was good. I was like, oh. Are we doing this for right now? Sorry. Yeah, Kofi puts up a great a fight, fight, but yeah. Lesnar beats Kingston yeah. one more time. All the heat in the world, ready and waiting for Drew McIntyre, the new star to take his turn in the spotlight and conquer the beast mm. at WrestleMania 36, admittedly in total silence in an empty room. Yeah. And that's a shame. And that is how Kofi Mania ends. Not ultimately in victory, no. But at least it ends in a way that makes sense. Kofi loses the title, gets crushed, fights back, keeps his sights set like on the this. title, and comes up short. That's fine. But at least he doesn't lose that underdog drive, that ambition, that purpose that drove us all to get behind him on the road to WrestleMania 35. And that is how I would book Kofi Mania and the... Hey, I enjoyed that. That was enjoyable. I like what he did there. I like he kept uh, some uh, believability in Kofi not really being able to beat Brock. He may get in, you know, may stand a chance, like just a little bit, but he doesn't ultimately beat him. And they leave that. He leaves that for uh, Drew McIntyre to overcome Brock. But I like this. This was way leagues better than what WWE gave us for Kofi's title run man so this was dope I definitely will be checking out some more of how Adam will book it uh different uh wrestlers I definitely will if you guys want me to so if you guys do want me to check out more of this series smash that like button destroy that like button get me to you know 1k likes on this vid I will definitely check out some more of this series this was dope man I enjoyed this Fairly entertaining, man. But comment down below. Let me know. What was your favorite match during that time when Kofi was champion? Uh, I'm be honest with you. My favorite match during that period of time, <laughs> obviously, is when he won it. <laughs> when he won the title. When Kofi Mania was running wild. When he won the title initially, that was the best match he had that entire feud that's it and when he won in that wrestlemania hands down one of the best matches best matches one of the best matches that night one of the best matches he had that entire feud man it should have been some more but that was the one for me so comment down below let me know but i appreciate all the love and support road to 70k appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all on the next one peace